Welcome to my channel, In Other World. Hey guys, once again welcome back to my channel. I'm here to help you guys with my best subject knowledge and ideas with you. This tutorial will be highly effective for aeronautical as well as civil engineering students. Those are preparing for competitive examination. Today my topic is share center important as per any competitive exam and also for your academic areas. So today I will cover few topics shear flow, shear center, centroid, examples and MCQs at the end of the session. So first I will come the shear flow. Shear flow uh, is denoted by the word or a letter Q. Shear flow through a section of a thickness is calculated using the product of shear stress and the thickness that is Q equals to tau into T. Now what is tau? What is shear shear stress that is vq by it what is vq and it i will come in the later part of the section but you have to remem remember this formula so thus this equation for a shear flow in it is used in only in a thin wall structure or a wave section structure so from the above equation so we can write that q equals to vq by i now i will come what is mean by v q and i q stands for shear flow v stands for the shear force perpendicular to the neutral axis you have to remember the force and the shear force are different here the shear force will be acting perpendicular to the neutral axis and please make a note of it in some book or some author they have mentioned the shear force as s in some author they have mention as v any one of the convention is okay until you understand the concept q stands for the first moment of area above the neutral axis and i stands for first moment of inertia above the neutral axis for the enter cross section now what is mean by first moment of area it is known as the a product of area into the centroid y bar says as a centroid so we can write q equals to v a y bar by i x now comes a shear center a point in which a concentrated load passes then there will be only bending no twisting so please p uh, make a point of it in shear center there will be a place where a bending takes place but no twisting Okay, so the point shear center is a point where it the shear will be very pure, pure or we can say as a pure stress and there will be no torsion on that point. Please make a note of it, there will be no torsion on that point, only bending will take place. Shear center is also known as a center of flexure or a center of twist and the point through which the resultant of a shear passes on it next comes it is necessary for the forces to act through the particular point which may not coincide with the centroid you might have a question of the last line what is meant by centroid how it is coinciding i'm coming in the later section now we'll focus on the what is meant by centroid centroid and the center of gravity you might have a confusion so i will clarify your this doubt center or uh, centroid is a center of a plane of an any object or any figure which depends on the plane areas and center of gravity is a point at where the inter body acts on it that is when the weight comes that means it's a center of gravity and when the plane comes plane areas comes that is it's a point of a centroid that's what it is different between centroid and the center of gravity here comes i have uh, shown few important um, geometries of figures which are frequently asked first is comes a square circle rectangular semicircle triangle quarter tri uh, circle uh, equilateral triangle and 
quarter circle this formulas are very very important you have to memorize that so what is meant by x bar when we are taking the component this x axis is a y axis so when we are taking the second moment of inertia about the y axis we have to take as x bar but when we are taking a moment about the x axis we have to take a geometry about y bar this is what you have to keep in mind and accordingly you have to remember the formula here these are the three important uh, geometries which are you need to know to solve the shear center in the problem these are the few circle rectangular and right angle triangle you don't have to memorize much of it so at least you have to remember this three categories along with the formula now come i will come like if a beam you have you know what is beam if the beam has a two axis of symmetry and then if the beam any beam have a two symmetry if you cut it in a symmetry if you have two symmetry so what will happen the shear center and the centroid will coincide at the same point that is a concept you, you remember i will explain later with a some more example so it will be clear for you then comes second condition comes that if any beam having the symmetry only in one axis in one axis we symmetry other axis is cannot form it so the shear center does not coincide with the centroid but lies on the axis of symmetry please keep that in mind always the shear center lies on the axis of symmetry only please keep that in mind the shear center lies on the axis of symmetry but it depends whether they will coincide or they will not coincide and where they will form that is a point so what you have to remember the tricks these are the important tricks like how you can understand or you can predict the right option from this so if they have two symmetry so they both the shear center and the um, centroid will both will lie in the same point but in case if one symmetry and the other does not then they will not coincide but the shear center will lie on the axis of symmetry then when the load passing through the shear center when actually the, the shear force will pass only through the shear center where there will be only bending in the cross section but no no twisting as i've already said in the de it's a def definition of the shear center so here comes few example for l section so you see the l section here so if what are the l section you can say what is a symmetry here here so what happens both the legs are intersecting at point points so the shear center lies but what is a line of symmetry for them line of symmetry is this one if you cut from here both will be having a mirror image so this is a line of symmetry and so the shear center lies here next comes symmetrical i section so here is comes a symmetrical i section there is a symmetrical if you cut from here also both the sides same if you cut from here both the same will be reflecting the same so for i section what happens both the line we have two symmetry here we have two symmetrical axes so both will be coincide in the same point that means who are the both shear center and the centroid will be coinciding in the same point for i section but here we have only one line of symmetry so they won't coincide but shear center will lie on the line of symmetry now comes for the open section such as semicircular section or open uh, open circular section which will lie outside the section so see this is a channel section i have given an example so what happens in case of channel section or semicircular section what happens the shear center lies outside the yellow point you can see here 
the yellow point denoted as a shear center which will lie on the lie outside of the section and the black dot is represent the centroid of a section see for this section this this becomes the line of symmetry and the, as per the definition as per the knowledge we know that the shear center lies on the line of symmetry next comes this is a very good example you can see what does the three figure explains the first one what they do is at some point at some point this this is a c section open section what happens at this point a load is acting so what is happening the beam is getting bended on the same time a little twist is taking place but see the second one now at some point at some distance we are giving a load maybe at some point we are giving a load this is this load is called as shear force or shear load we are giving from a uh, shear center of the beam so what is happening that is causing some kind of bending but there is no twisting see the third one again we are giving a load ahead or inside the section inside the section if you are loading what is happening again there is a cause of bending and more twisting so what we explains from here we explains that at the shear point at the shear center is such a point or a such a distance from the from the real structure or a within the real structure where if the load acts that doesn't cause any twist but it may cause a bending this is a concept or a fundamental idea behind the shear center so here comes few examples i section channel section here are the i section channel section this is a t section z section l section so from this you have to remember this this is a centroid here this is a dot is a shear center for this figure and for this side shear center comes a yellow color and the center is a black dot from this ex uh, from this figure what you can come to conclusion that for i section when we have two line of symmetry it both get coincided but here we have only one line of symmetry so this for open section or channel section it lies outside of the section here you see the t section what you have you have only one line of symmetry like this way so it lies on the junction or of the two legs likewise and the l section see in the z section we have the line of symmetry here and it also lies here so you have to remember this few examples these are frequently asked in any competitive exam either in civil engineering or aeronautical engineering here comes a few mcq questions the possible location of shear center of the channel section is given below this is a channel section now we have given some few points p q r s so among this four points we have to locate where the shear center will occur in this channel section so just now we have seen an example so we are we know that it will lie outside the section so obviously p is the right answer that is a option a and then comes the next question point within the cross sectional plane of a beam through which the resultant of the external loading on a beam has to pass through to ensure pure bending without twisting of the cross section of the beam is called see these are the four options moment center centroid shear center elastic center see in the question please point out ensure pure bending without twisting what does it mean when there is a without twisting that means shear center is a point where without test without twisting so option c is a right answer here comes the next question consider the following statement one if a beam has two axes of symmetry even shear center does not coincide with the centroid two 
for a section having one axis of symmetry the shear center does not coincide with the centroid but lies on an axis of symmetry third one if a load passes through the shear center then there will be only bending in the cross section and no twisting which of the stats uh, which of this statements are correct so 1 and 2 and 3 b 1 and 2 c 2 and 3 d 1 and 3 see what is the mean by shear center they're uh, describing about the shear center but the first point what we remember the two axes when two axes comes the shear center and the centroid they coincide on the same point so the option that is that means the statement one is completely wrong and the other statement is right two and three so our right answer is c so two and three is a right answer comes next question in a section shear center is a passing through which e which if the resultant load passes the section will not subject to any see this is another indirect question uh, from the definition of a shear center among this four options we know it doesn't cause any twisting when the twisting comes means there is no torsion so option d here comes Another question consider four thin wall of different open section has shown in figure one two five four a uh, shear force of magnitude F acts vertically downwards at the location P in all the beams. In which of the following cases does the shear force induce bending and twisting? This is a di different or little uh, different question. They have asked an indirect way where the shear center is absent. That what they have asked from this question. So let's recall this figure. So in the L section, it lies on the shear center. T section it lies perfectly on the shear center and this is also a symmetric on both the points so both lies uh, the center uh, the shear center and the centroid lies on the same point but in case of open section channel section you see this lies here so as per I've shown in the previous example like when they're pulling that uh, load so what happens there will be causing of the twist as well as bending so our right option is option b that is second case which is both will induce bending as well as twisting this is an indirect way of asking please be conceptual and clear your fundamentals comes it in i section symmetrical about i axis and i y y axis sphere center lies at centroid of a top flanges centroid of the wave at the center of the bottom and none of the above so we know the i section i section here so it has two uh, symmetrical lines both in i axis and i y y so where the shear center will occur the shear center will occur here see so this is called as wave and this is called as flanges these are the top flanges is the bottom flanges and this is called as wave so it will occur on the center of the wave so our right answer is option b so for more updates stay tuned to my channel and don't forget to subscribe for more updates thank you take care bye